What's up? How's everything with you? Everything is blessed, you know what I'm saying? Thank God everything is blessed. We're chilling. How are you? Oh, one episode after the other, and they're going crazy, man. They're going oh, crazy. Man. People are like, what? Right, right, right. This one, I put one out today. It wasn't even part of the whole thing. It was just... Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah, I, know. I, I just wanted it like... Once I did that first Mob Deep one, I'm like, you know what? Let me just give people once a week something, you know, something new, you know? Once a week, people are like in need for daily doses, man. Right, right. I can't do, I can't do doses, any, any, any shows. So I'm, I'm, I might as well, you know? I can't do any performances right now, you know? Yeah. Well, everything's been going crashing down, but we can do it. It's like yeah. we can do it. Hip hop always finds a way. It does. It definitely does. Well, first of all, most of the people don't know you in, in Egypt. They want an intro for who you are. So please, please, please tell us an intro about yourself, your roots, the backgrounds, everything, and how it all started. Yeah, salute to everybody listening out there. I'm Napoleon, the legend, MC extraordinaire. I do hip-hop. I do some Afrobeat. I'm originally from the Comoros Islands in East Africa. Uh, both of my parents, I was born in Paris, France, and I grew up in um, Washington, D.C., Maryland area, and I'm currently living in Brooklyn. I've been in Brooklyn for, for several uh, several years now, and I make a lot of music, and I, I spit... A lot of good fire. music. A and lot I, of good music. And I, I talk about my life. I talk about whatever is real. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't put no limitations into what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How did it all start with you? I mean, you know, when, when, when we was young, growing up over here, hip-hop was everywhere, you know? And, and it was just like, it was part of what, what we listened to all the time. I just never thought that it would be something that I would do till I seen my friends do it. Then when you see your friends doing something, you're like, oh, wow, you guys are rapping? You guys wrote, you wrote a rhyme? And so they, they, it, it just made me want to just get into it. And once you start and you get that bug, it's like, it's uh, it you can it never to me. Yeah, there's no back. Well, I, most of the I was, a, I was an addict from that point, man. Oh, it, it all happened to all of us. We have this kick and it never goes off. Once you click on, it doesn't turn off. Right. Well, most of the rappers, they don't know anything about the, the hip hop history. Like most of them, they think they're born, like they know how to do it. They know how to do the thing, but they need this kind of vibe uh, or they need this kind of um, introduction to the hip hop history. Most of them, they don't even accept it. They say, this is old age. I'm not going to listen to people who passed away R.I.P., of course. And they don't want to, like, get to this point. So what do you suggest for them? Oh, what I suggest is, look, first, nowadays, information is everywhere. It's not like before, you know? Like, when I was growing up in Maryland and, and D.C., I didn't know much of hip-hop history uh, apart from what I would hear, you know, I, I, I then I, I would have to take an album and, and I'll hear like Wu-Tang say something or Tri Car Quest say something and I say something and I'll piece things together. But now, yeah. and then I had to get curious and, and research. Most people are not curious, but now there's documentaries everywhere. You know, you, you know, you know, it came from the Bronx. Things were happening and hip hop was a, a cultural movement. That, that spurned off of poverty and people not having nothing and the government not caring about them. So that was yeah. they, their, their form of expression and everything that came about it. So it's something that even now everybody can relate to because the most majority of us have some sort of struggle, whether it's financial, whether it's like goals that we need to meet that we, we, that we can't meet, where we live, we want to be somewhere else, we want to do something else, we want to travel, but we can't, we're stuck in our neighborhood. Hip hop allows you to like, you do this well. One thing about hip hop, it could take you all around the world. And even if not physically, your voice is going to travel everywhere now. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's like nowhere on earth I would have like, my voice would have reached yours if it wasn't for hip hop. Right. In no way I, I could have heard your voice or you would have heard mine right. except with the hip hop theme. And that's the thing that people, hip hop connects all of us. 
Yes. And, and exactly. it's, it's, such, it's, such, it's such a powerful weapon because now it's like, I would have never thought, like I tell a lot of people, one of the perks of just doing what I do is that I get to meet so many great people. Not only do I need to get to travel, like before all this COVID stuff, like last year I went to Prague, I went to uh, Czechoslovakia, I've been to Belgium, I've been to, to France, I've been to like so many places in America, you know, that are far, I've been to LA, and it's because of hip hop, and it's like a lot, and whether it's not only just rap, but you know, the, you know, hip hop. First of all, let me not talk about hip hop without talking about the five elements. For those who don't know, there's the the, the DJing, there's the the beat uh, break dancing, there's the rapping, there's the graffiti, and also some people say the fifth element, and it is knowledge. So it's about you know feeding your mind and everything like that. So. There's different ways you can express yourself in hip hop. You don't have to be a rapper. You can do a yeah, lot. Of yeah. things. Hey, shout out to Oriana back there from Switzerland, man. She she's a dope hip hop hip hop head too. She saw one of, one of my shows. I went to Switzerland uh, last year for the first time in my life because of hip hop. And you you meet so many people and you keep the connections and the ties and it enriches yeah, your life. You know what I'm saying? So what was the hardest uh, obstacle that ever faced you and how did you overcome it from being a rapper? Oh man, it's, I, I think there, there, there's, several, there's several things, like, you know, I've, been, I've been broke before <laughs> and <laughs> I mean hip hop has allowed me to, to, to make a livelihood, I, I'm actually living off hip hop, you know, I haven't had a full time job for, for years, I'm over five years now, so you know. That, that, that's a big obstacle financially, being able to provide for yourself and, and, and do certain things. But I think, honestly, one of the toughest period of my life is, is when, the, the, when I lost my dad about like um, probably like 12 years ago. And, and it's like um, it was unexpected. It was like a real hard, like real hard moment in my life. I, I had to go back to Comoros. Then we had to go back to, to France to get him into hospitals. And he didn't make it. And... When I went back to America, my whole life was in shambles. Like yeah. I had, I had no job. I had, I had, I had, I had no place to live. Well, they, 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 they were nice enough to leave me for 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 a few weeks, but I had to get out of there because I, I didn't pay rent for like months because I was overseas oh. uh, around my father, and um, I, I, I was empty inside. You know what I'm saying? I felt like a zombie. Like there was nothing. I, 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 just, I, I felt like I, my life was going cool, and then I got hit by a bomb. You know, what I mean? and, and I, you know, you lose your apartment, you lose you your dad, shot. you're grieving. And once I got back to myself and got back to making music, it's like I think it, it gave me life again. It gave me purpose again. You know, exactly. so hip hop has always been there for me. And, and that sense where, like, I could go through the, the toughest times. It's, if, if I could find a mic and if I could find something to record, it, it, I could speak about it. I could feel better about it. And I, and I could be excited to show it to the world. That's what excites me the most. That's why I put out so much music, because I want to show people what, what I do, you know? Yeah, because what you do is, like, what you write some other people can't express. They have the same feelings as well, but you may never know. But it just represents that's why some people like they get connected to some kind of tracks or some kind of bars that you write and yeah. and they say it's all about them yeah yeah for uh, sure there's uh someone from egypt Bahat, who is like my best friend he says i'm not good at english please tell him hi hey what's up brother so how you doing I hope but, I, I hope I, I hope to visit Egypt one day. I mean, it's it's always a place where I want to go. You know? More than welcome, man. I'll send you a private jet. Well, you, you <laughs> like say you coming, and I'm sending a private jet, getting you all the way to Cairo. <laughs> For sure, man. Cause and, and you know, like everybody else, you know, I want to see the pyramids, of course, and I I just want to catch a vibe. I've never been out there, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's magical. The sand is magical. Like the vibes and everything, and like the music even here, you can get inspired by so many places. And I'll make sure that whenever the corona is over, the first thing you're doing is coming over to here. Just finish up your stuff and you're coming to here. So who influenced you the most? Tell oh, me. Man. It's, it's a lot of artists. I, I'm a music lover, you know? Like when I was growing up in the house, there was 
and my father was always playing reggae music, reggae, African music, R&B music, soul music, so hip hop music. I was playing, and it was playing on the radio with my friends. So I always like reggae. So you know the the the, the Bob Marley's, Jimmy Cliffs, and all them. Yeah. Big influences like when I when I was growing up because it was playing in my, my 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 house and then Michael Jackson and people like that. And my earliest influences in hip hop is people like the Wu Tang Clan, the the Nas's. You know, I, I came up in the golden era, so all the the, the, the huge iconic rappers, KRS One. It was all these people I was listening to and learn the vibe and the attitude of hip hop. Because hip hop is not just it's cause you rap. You can you can be good, but you can still be corny. Hip hop there's something yeah. about it where it's like stylish and flavorful. And people forget that sometimes because yo, know, you got a little bit of rhythm and you can put a little few words together. But you it might still be corny to some, it won't connect. You gotta be able to connect. Some some people are not as good. But they have to convey the message. It's about the delivery and everything. Right. It, it, it's just, you got the flavor. You know, it's like it for, for the B-boys, if you're dancing, you, you got the flavor when you dance. If you, you got flavor when you dress, it's the same thing for hip-hop. If you rhyme it, you better have some flavor, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what do you encourage young rappers to do? Young rappers. Oh, nowadays, I encourage y'all this. Like, like, this is real simple. I'm going to be... Get yourself a laptop. You can afford it. Laptops are not that expensive. You know, even if it has to take three months of, of working or doing something, get yourself a laptop. Get yourself an interface, a mic, and and record. And, and, and you know, download some beats online and, and make hip-hop and record yourself. If you're rapping, you have, to, you have to practice this craft because a lot of people want to practice the stylistics. They want to look like a rapper. They want to dress like the rapper. They want to have the woman. They want to have the cars. They want to smoke, be cool. and But your raps are garbage because you don't know how to rap. And it's like... Exactly. It, it's exactly. Like, it's like, don't present something. It's merchandise that you cannot deliver to people unless you're convinced with it. And people are convinced with it as well. Right. Some people don't take the... the You said you cut off for a little bit. I said, what do you give them for uh, for the people who don't take your opinion? They ask your opinion, but they don't take it. When you give them the opinion, they give you more explanations. I did this for that. I did that for this. It's like they're trying to make it by force, you know. It's right. like I created something new, and and when you tell them to listen to old music, they don't even do it. Right. Yeah. No. Nah, and, and a lot of people won't. And but you might not. You might not be fit for being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? It's like, look. It always reminds me. I used to play basketball. I love basketball, right? And there's some kids that come to the court, and they'll have the the Allen Iverson braids. They have the yeah. cut off shirts. They have the nice shoes and the nice shorts, and they cannot play worth nothing. And that that that's how you guys are. You know because. You're not if you if you don't go back and really under, have an understanding of what it is, you're gonna look crazy. You're gonna look corny. I think you have to be able to take criticism, and it's hard. Nobody likes criticism. I don't. You know, it hurts me if I put out something and I'm like, it's not getting the feedback that I want, right? But yeah. it's like you have to have a, a, a healthy dose of not caring and caring and listening. So a part of you, you can't, you can't be married to everybody's opinion because you know what? Some people might, might not like you and, 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 some, and some people might, you know what I mean? I have songs where some people don't like, and, and another person's in my inbox at the same time. It's like, this is my favorite song. So yeah. you have to care and not care, but as you do it, you're going to understand what you like and how it represents you. So you won't care what somebody like I'm at a point where I don't really care what people feel because I know that moment represents me and was true to me at that that's how I felt I, I had a good time doing it I felt it and it came out like that so you have to care but you also have to listen especially at first because some people might be giving you good feedback but also 
You have to know who you ask feedback to because everybody has an opinion. Some people are not qualified to give you an opinion. Exactly. And sometimes when I see people are like giving opinions and stuff, I tell them, man, I see like they, they're giving their opinion to someone. I tell them like, please, I don't see Beyonce or Jay-Z giving opinions. Right, it's like, right, 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 pull right, it right. down and, 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 and like extract the hate out of the comment. It's like when, when they don't like something, they just destroy it at all. You know what's funny is just like, usually the comments, uh, 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 you know, for, for somebody not to like something and, and, and to, to leave, leave a hurtful comment, it's, it's you got to think of it in my state. Like, if I don't like something, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just really going to turn it off or ignore it. So yeah. some of these comments often are not coming in good faith. You know, this is the social media internet era. And people, yeah. everybody has the ability to, like, affect you. And sometimes they want to be able, they feel like they got power because they could, they could tell you something that's a little hurtful or make you feel a certain way. And you got to be wary of that, too, when you put your music out there. Because there's, you're going to have some people telling you, oh, your shit is trash. Oh, you should stop. Or what are you doing? Or look, look at your head. I shaved my head. There's some people making fun of my head. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, they, they just, something. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be you. And you're like, fuck it. You, you don't got to like me. I got, I got people that like me already. So I'm good. So coming back to one of the best questions that I need to ask you. Yeah. What's your favorite track of all times that you have done? Oh wow, that's crazy, man! You t me, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a library of music. I did that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I got thousands. Like I wouldn't even know. You know, you know why it's so hard for me to answer this honestly. I, I'll, I'll figure something out to say, but I don't. I'm at a point where I make so much music and I produce so much music. I make music every day, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't care like i do it and it's like boom that's it that's that's for here that's for this project that's being released I, I care about what i'm gonna do now or tomorrow yeah so it's like my favorite track my honestly probably is a track that's not released yet that's gonna be released because i just did it like last week or something depends on the mood you're in it's that's true too you know i mean look like my most personal track is a track called Condolences that on uh, my Path of, Path of a Warrior album, which I, I, I talk about loss. I, I talk about the loss of my dad because it's so personal. I mean, it's in my favorite track. Sometimes I like to listen to it, but, you know, it's, it means a lot to me. But uh, yeah. it's just like I don't remember a lot of my tracks because I don't want to live in the past. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm from since I'm active. Maybe at some point when I retire, I'm going to look back at my catalog and be like, yo, this, I was going crazy here. I'm active, so my thing is, like, I'm only as good as what I do now. Like, that freestyle I put out, I got to be as good as that, and then next week I got to be better, and then the next track got to be better, or else I should just leave the game, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like an athlete yeah. when it comes to that. I'm, I'm part, part... You're competing. You're only competing with Napoleon the Legend. You're not competing with nobody else. Well, in my head, yeah, man, I'm on the court, and I, and I mean, I am competing. Like, it, it, rap is, a, it's a, it, rap is like a contact sport, also. So I'm competing with what's going on and what I hear. But honestly, I just want to bring the best of myself because I feel like when I'm at my best, I, I don't really just think like I could be touched because I could do everything every everybody else could do and things they can't do. You know, that's how I feel about me. You know. Yeah. So. The name of the track you didn't say it yet. Oh, but I said once. I said like condolences was like a real personal track, so it's one of my favorites. Look, I I, I love this track. I, the one track that that comes to mind. I like this track I did uh, on Afro Street Two called uh, "16 Bit," uh, which yeah. is um, it's just a hard boom bap, like a a hard beat and a sample. I produced it myself, and mm -hmm. I, I just feel like. I know I can't wait to perform it. So I, it's, right now it's probably my favorite track because it gives it makes me hype every time I hear it. Well, is there anything going to be released? It's like an album, yeah. new clip. Oh, there's an album on Friday. What's the what's the date? Friday. Where's my calendar? Fr Friday, tw May twenty second. I have an album coming out called uh, Shikara, which Shikara is Japanese for strength. 
And uh, it's, it's it's actually out right now on vinyl and CD. Why on you myself? Right, right. You know what's crazy, right? The album art is the is the Japanese letter Shikara, which means strength. And my yeah. own girl told me that Mary J. Blige has the same symbol on her hand. Yes, and she, exactly. And she, has, and she has a jewelry line on her hand. And on the first track, and I didn't know this, of course, but on the first yeah. song of, of the album, I say, uh, beautiful like the soul of Mary J. Blige. <laughs> this is for the struggle. So that, and, and is, and that is karma. That is karma. It's, it's like you picked everything like it's, it's, it's falling into place. Right now, that's that's pretty prophetic, man. When somebody told me that, but no, it's it's a the, the album is called uh, Shikara. It's called Strength. It's from an Italian producer called Onion Quarry, and he sampled Japanese soundtracks and things like that. And I like stuff like that, so it's a it's a it's a conceptual album, and it's all about. I, I'm looking strength. forward to listen to it. Right, right, I'm and it's all about because we need strength right these days. It's it's hard times. We need to stay strong. We need to stay yes. focused and not lose our minds. You know. Yeah. Tell me about one last thing I need to ask you. After you being with us in in uh, Arab hip hop group. Yeah. What's what's the good thing that we're presenting and what is still missing? Okay. In your point like, of view. First off, shout out to Amarabi, man. He's uh, yeah. I love this guy. He's my brother. He's a he's a dope artist and a genius. I'm, I'm really happy that group is so dope. I I I'm Almost can't believe it's got that big so fast. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I think I think it's a sense. A lot of things I don't understand because obviously I don't speak Arabic and I can't.